Getting back to our design challenge, we've spent some time looking at the normal operation of the transmission lines in an airplane and how to test a transmission line to see if things are working well. What about if there's a problem on the transmission line? Old wiring on an airplane can have problems ranging, ranging from broken or cracked insulation to split wires resulting from physical chafing. These can come from vibrations on the airplane, for example. These types of problems can create incorrect electrical signals and sparks and even arcs that can burn holes through nearby metal. Question: How could we change our model of the transmission line to account for a problem occurring somewhere? That is, how might we detect a fault on the transmission line? And if we took a measurement, how would we know that there was a fault and where it was located? Since we've assumed until now that the transmission lines are homogeneous, this means that a transmission line with a fault along it would have a different equivalent circuit where the fault is located. That is, there would be a discontinuity in the impedance of the transmission line at that location. And what happens when there's a discontinuity in the impedance? Hint, we just saw a discontinuity of the impedance for the transmission line with an open circuit load. RL was not equal to Z0 in that case. So in that case we get a reflection, just like we saw a reflection when the load of a transmission line was an open circuit with an infinite impedance. So let's consider such a scenario with a fault occurring halfway down the transmission line. In this case there's a leakage current between the two conductors represented by a shunt resistor. Halfway down the transmission line. Here is a video from solving the telegrapher's equations with the fault at the halfway point. The video shows that the voltage would what the voltage would be along the transmission line if the fault were there versus not there. You can see the reflection generated by the fault. Now imagine we're taking a voltage me measurement at the generator to see if the transmission line is operating as expected. Let's the watch the video again and see how the voltage changes over time at z equals zero, right here on the left. Right there we see a different value from the red curve than the blue curve. You can see in the video that we get a reflection too early at the generator if there's a fault somewhere along the length of the transmission line. If we know the amplitude of the reflected pulse from the fault and how long it takes to reach the generator, or another observation point, we can work backwards and determine what RF is and where the fault occurred. Let's consider a specific example. Consider the scenario shown here. Assume RG is equal to Z0, which is equal to 75 ohms. The voltage observed at the generator at Z equals zero is shown on the bottom. The transmission line's insulating material is Teflon, so epsilon r is equal to 2.1 in between the two conductors. There are three parts to this question. First, using what you know here, determine the generator voltage. 